Youth in Portugal. To a land of seeming safety, my parents fled Germany, just in time to avoid Hitler's terror. Soon, relatives reluctantly left their homeland as so many lives changed forever. When I was born during a time of turmoil, a cloak of love was placed on me by my father. Mother needed time to heal from jaundice, found a wet nurse to feed me. She required space to knit the covering that would embrace me in love. My elongated life now recalls the scent of freshly caught grilled sardines by the sea, while fishermen in dark blue pants and shirts and caps spread their nets on the wide sandy expanse. In the late afternoon, an orange haze formed to announce the beginning sunset. I remember washerwomen singing fados, songs of lament, while hanging linen sheets on clotheslines. I heard loud flapping to the rhythm of the afternoon winds, and later, nestling into the scent of sunshine, I slept easily. The short walk from our stucco house with a wrought iron fenced yard, as I held my father's hand, feeling the safety of connection wired with love, we made this frequent outing to the beach a highlight of my young life. My left hand held a wooden pail with shovel inside, just in case building sandcastles tempted us. Just the two of us, as my mother stayed home with my sister, a year and a half younger than I. I don't know. Dark reality arrived when Mr. Elbow, father's friend, was eaten by the sea after going out on a pier where the waves carried him off. My father and I went to that place to wish him a safe new life. My sister and I also had fun dressing in intricate woolen costumes, skirt and vest and apron and shawl, decorated with embroidery, wearing these to celebrations. I recall playing alone in the garden, pretending the cat could talk, wielding a watering can almost taller than myself as I became the carrier of sustenance, and the abandoned bunnies whose pink skin held no fur, and nursing them with eyedroppers so their black and white fur would protect them when they were ready to go back into the neighboring meadow. All changed when aboard the Carvalho da Rujo, the horse of the sea, as our small family of four, taking only basic belongings, sailed to America, the country that would become our home forever. These images, both technicolor and black and white, sparks from my past, arrived to announce a beginning that took unexpected paths and placed us later upon firm ground.